What's going on guys, it's Everett and we are on part two of wrist mobility. So we're gonna build on that extension stretch we learned in the first video. If you didn't watch that video, obviously it's gonna build on that, so make sure you watch that video to learn the cues on how to isolate the wrist for extension properly. And we're gonna add isometrics to that stretch and then move into eccentrics. We're trying to build up more control over our muscles and expand that range of motion that we can actually use, control, stabilize within for push-ups, handstands, bench pressing, all that good stuff. So, you might need a yoga block. If you don't have a yoga block, just grab some books. You know, if you don't have some books, buy books, read more books. Um, but yoga blocks are pretty cheap, like seven bucks on Amazon. So, once again, we're gonna get into potentially a half combat position, or you can do both knees back like I showed you, which is a regression in the stretching position. But in this instance, I'm gonna be in the half combat stance. And once again, fingertips facing back, nice even pressure in the wrist. My shoulder is in a good neutral position, elbow is forward, and if I can't get there by sitting up, I'm gonna lean forward, get all situated, and then fold up. So we're gonna add one extra cue to this position, and that is trying to take a little bit of strain off this wrist. If you push straight down into the ground, again, you might get a little bit too much pressure at the joint. So try to keep the wrist a little bit lighter on the ground and fold backwards onto the fingertips. That's still gonna get you a pretty good wrist stretch. The reason why we're adding that in is because when we do the isometrics, again, it can get a little bit too extreme on the wrist for some people. So isometrics is a muscle contraction with no visible change in the length of the muscle, all right? So here I'm shortening these top muscles and then they're becoming longer. So I'm going to find the end range here and then just contract. So there's a lot of ways to do isometrics in the system that I work within, the FRS system. We call these pales and rails and they're a way to work both the long tissues and the short tissues, which has a lot of benefits, all right? So we would load up into this stretch. Again, don't go as far as you possibly can for the first 30 seconds, a minute. We're trying to hold this for two minutes. And then after that two minutes, what I'm going to do is push my palm into the ground, just like 10% of my effort. So again, imagine I was holding a weight and I was doing a forearm curl to get big forearm muscles. I'm just pushing that palm out of extension. And I'm gonna push right down into the ground, just like 10%, like I said. A little subjective, might be 20% for you, but really it's a light amount of pressure. If that feels all right, then we're going to climb to 20% down, 30% down, 40% down, and try to go about half of your strength pushing that palm into the ground. At this point, when you do this, you might start again hiking that shoulder, trying to involve muscles, that's completely fine, but make sure you do it evenly. So after you get up to about 30, 40%, get some air in your stomach, lock up your abs, you can start to clench the other hand, you can lock up the muscles in your back. And when we hit that 50% effort, we're gonna hold that for 10 seconds. And then without moving, we're gonna relax all of our muscles, all right? Now, after you do that, again, don't cheat at the shoulder or anywhere else. We should be able to lean back a little bit more. And again, don't crank back as far as you can. It should feel almost like you have like an extra 10 to 15 degrees of range of motion open up, all right? Now after that, we're gonna do the opposite muscles because we wanna train our body how to use both muscles in the short, shortest positions and longest positions. So we just did the stretched outside and now we're gonna fire these top forearm muscles. It's gonna be a little tricky to even connect with these muscles at first, but it's as if we're trying to pull the fingertips off the ground or contracting the muscles on the top of the forearm like we're trying to pull ourselves further back. And we're gonna do the same thing. We might rest for 30 seconds or a minute here and then we're gonna contract the top muscles of the forearm just like 10%. 10% up, same thing, squeezing a little harder after a few seconds to 20%, squeezing a little harder to 30%. At this point, we start to get some air in our stomach and tense up the rest of the body and we squeeze to 40 and then 50%, and we're gonna hold for 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, relax, and again, see if you can get a little further. Now at this point, we've been in this position for you know three to four minutes, so really easily get out of that and do a little wrist shake. And so if you cranked back too hard, or again, you were pushing straight down into the ground, 
or you ramp to you know 100% of your strength down into the ground, you're definitely gonna realize it after you try to get out of that stretch and it's gonna be a little stiff. Now when you do this, again, it's a workout. It's not exciting, but it's a workout. So don't be surprised if your forearm muscles are a little sore the next day, okay? Because again, this just isn't stretching. We're really trying to focus on the weakest areas, the areas we can't really control within our wrist extension and flexion and become very strong there. And we're adding a lot of force into those tissues just like you would weightlifting. So then we would switch over and same thing on the other side. And I'll do this with a block because everyone has different heights of torsos and arms. So maybe to get to the ground, you're really leaned over like this. So you might need, like I said, a yoga block or a book. And this is a little too tall for me, my shoulders way up. But same thing, I would get set up nice and even and I'd roll on back like this. Just get a little stretch sensation going here, not crazy. Easy one to two minute stretch. If it's feeling a little tough there to hold this position at a minute, you went too far. And then once again, after two minutes, I'm going to push my hand, my palm into the ground, 10%. A couple seconds, gonna push harder to 20%. It's like driving a car, 10 miles an hour, 20 miles an hour, 30 miles an hour. You're not gonna jump from 10 to 50. And again, about the 30, 40%, I'm gonna get tight everywhere and I'm gonna go to 40 and then 50%, hold for 10 seconds. Exhale and relax, don't, don't move the position. Lean back a little bit more, that feels a little bit too much. And then same thing, fire the top muscles, like I'm either trying to actively pull myself deeper into the stretch, or I'm trying to lift my palm off the block like that. Same thing, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50%, hold for 10 seconds, exhale, relax, and then slowly out of that. Now, this system obviously begs the question, hey, can I ramp to like 100%? Absolutely, you can. Again, I wouldn't recommend that. This stuff gets tricky. It's just like weightlifting. Again, it's contracting your muscles. So you wouldn't load up the barbell with like double your body weight the first time you're back squatting. So you can go 30, 40, 50% here. In strength training, anything over about 70, 75% of your maximum effort would be considered like legitimate strength training to actually get stronger. Same thing here, if you're ramping as hard as you can at 70, 80%, you're gonna get very, very sore off of that, okay? Doesn't mean it's wrong to do, but you need to be careful and there needs to be a program to get there, all right? So throw that into the mix with the regular stretches. That'll actually help you increase the range of motion. It'll teach you how to use that new range of motion faster and it's actually gonna, again, add strength and uh, put force on all those tissues to make them stronger and more resilient, which will build into better mobility moving, all right? So now we're gonna move into eccentrics and you're gonna need some sort of weight or band and I'll show you why in a second. So moving into isometrics, now I wanna lay out the progression of this. Again, if you've got really clicky, snappy wrists and they're painful to move around, it's a judgment call on you to go see you know, a manual practitioner, a chiropractor, physical therapist, to get some work done and an assessment to figure out what's wrong. If you just have really limited range of motion, and again, snapping, clicking, what you could do is your cars every day to work on that motion, that rotation at the joint level, build up more control and larger ranges of motion, add in the stretching with light isometrics to increase the range of motion, all right? If you just wanna build up more range of motion because you're trying to do something like handstands, which is pretty extreme, all of your body weight into a lot of extension, then you can load up mainly just in the wrist extension stretch with a much larger contraction to match or exceed what you would be putting on your wrist in a handstand. Now, say we're moving past that point, now we're gonna actually add in motion. So it's still gonna be muscle contraction like the isometrics, but there's the added complexity of moving and the way we're gonna load up, you're probably going to go into a little bit extra range of motion, which again, needs to be safe for your individual case. So an eccentric is lengthening of the muscle under contraction. So you're contracting and you're lengthening the muscle. So if I'm doing a bicep curl, I've got the concentric portion, curl, muscle is shortening the bicep, and then I have the eccentric. So in bodybuilding, we call this the negative. And the reason why bodybuilders really like that is the amount of time that you're putting force on the muscle is very demanding on the tissues themselves and the nervous system too. So you get a lot of growth, 
Uh, and it's just, again, great for bodybuilding, things like that. So you've probably heard the term of, you know, doing the negative. So for the forearms, this is going to be pretty individual on what type of uh, implement or weight you have. So I'm going to provide a couple different options, but more importantly, the principles of how you would execute this. So I've got, this is just a 10 pound dumbbell and I might block my arm on something like a table or a bench and how you position your hand will change what type of stress you're putting on your wrist extensors, okay? So I'm gonna hold it like this and what I'm going to do is very controlled, I'm gonna lengthen that muscle and I'm actively lengthening here and then contracting down here and trying to get to as much wrist extension as I can. And then I'm not going to go back up, I'm gonna relax and return to that position. So a lot of people just sit here, bang out wrist curls. Again, we're focusing on just the negative to actively control that lengthening of these top tissues and add a little bit of weight and stress to that, okay? So get your hand position right for what you're going on, depending if you're benching, you're a climber. Again, you like doing handstands. We're gonna get loaded up and I'm just going into extension. This is not relaxing and letting the weight pull me down. I'm controlling that lengthening and I'm using these shortened tissues back up and again lengthening as far as I can. If you look at the angle here, that's pretty far. So you can get that far with this wrist stretch we were going over and the pails and the rails, but this will probably pull you depending on how much weight you're using into more wrist extension. All right. So same thing as strength training three by five, or maybe more into hypertrophy, like three by 10, three by 12. And then same thing, other side, try to mimic it, get the wrist good, and let the weight assist you in actually pulling into more wrist extension, and then return. So just the eccentric. So you can get very creative with this. Again, based on what hand position you need for your sport or your athletic endeavors, and your strength level. All right, looks small. First couple reps, not that bad. My wrist actually just popped. Uh, but you'll get better and better. You'll get stronger and stronger. And uh, this will help increase the active wrist extension. You could do the same thing into flexion as well. Uh, just holding a weight. Again, you can do with the, this with a dumbbell. I'm gonna switch over here just to give you a little bit more variety and show you what you can do with a band. So let me get set up for that. All right, so we got a band out. Again, using a cable machine, dumbbells, weights, bands, it's gonna put a different amount of stress. So it's just something you have to play around with and kind of act like a bodybuilder. Hey, what muscles am I firing through? What ranges of motion? Where am I feeling it in the muscles? And really try to isolate what you need to accomplish for your situation and your goals. So band, really easy. I'm just gonna step on it, get the right amount of stress. This is a pretty thin band. You could use really light TheraBands. Again, these are very cheap on Amazon and eBay and I'm gonna step on it. And once again, I could maybe try to trap it around my middle fingers so I can now do perfectly open palm support. And I'd let that nice and slow, maybe do a three count, four count, five count, and then relax and back up. And again, how many reps you do, how slow you make this eccentric is completely up to your goals. Or I could do a fist, carries over a little bit better to maybe some people who do a lot of benching, overhead pressing, back up, get that contraction going before I let go of that fist, and then control. And you'll also notice where you're weak, you might start deviating to one side. So it's a really good indicator of where you might be missing range of motion and compensating. Say you do a lot of push-ups or burpees and you just start paying attention one day, you really have to flare your elbows and you put a lot of pressure on the outsides of your palms. Well, one, that could run into potentially injuries down the road or overuse injuries. There's not a wrong way to do a push-up. It's not like that push-up doesn't count for you. But again, it could cause a problems or it could just be hampering your current performance as well. Instead of getting a nice spread fingers, good pressure in the palms, being able to really use your front delts, your triceps, and your pecs. So again, adjust it based on where you are. Do not jump into the isometrics with lots of reps, lots of weight, or even at all until you figure out where you are where your starting point is, what the program is, and what your goals are. So I hope you enjoyed this second video. Again, this is training. Be consistent. Don't just hop around from thing to thing. Pick the right exercises, the right stretches for you. Be consistent with them. As always, if you like this video, please comment, like, subscribe. At the time of making this video, I'm still a small channel, and that stuff helps me out 
immensely. I know you probably watch a lot of videos, YouTubers say that all the time. Uh, it really does make or break a channel. And if you like this style of training and you like this thought process, check out my full hip mobility course on my website. 16 videos long, two and a half hours of content. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video.